Come here, Deco. Huh? Bye. Hola, YouTube. My name is Ricardo Lino, and I'm we're wheel addicts. <laughs> so, today, me and Zane have two news for you. The first news, which is good and bad, is probably one of the last videos that we're gonna do with this guy, at least in the next few months, maybe years, because this guy is moving to the UK. But before he moves, we're gonna make this video. Last time that he downhill, it was... 15, I'm now 37. Yeah, but it's like when you were 15, when you went downhill, you had no idea what you were doing. And so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna make a downhill basics video. So if you wanna start going downhills, there's some things that you need to know. So it's right now 6.52 and we're eating a long hill. It's a really known hill from Cape Town. It's called Signal Hill. It's a long hill, but it's not too steep, not too fast, but fast enough for your first downhill 20 years later. You ready for this? Fuck my life. And because we're doing something that protection is really, really important, here's the protections that Zane brought with him for his first downhill. <laughs> These are shin guards, like if we're gonna fall on our shins. Anyway, talking about protection, the most important thing, the most important rule when you're going downhill is to never do it alone. So you don't want to go by yourself. You never know what's going to happen. Also, when you're going downhill, usually you want to have a safety car, especially if you're going in an open road like we're going today. So basically what we're going to do is there's one guy going down and the other one is driving the car behind. We can also put a camera, but the main reason why we do it is for safety. Also, imagine if you're going like down three or four kilometers downhill, if you need to go uphill every single time. It's important to have someone driving behind you and that, that will allow you to make more runs. And let's not forget that if you get super tired, it also gets dangerous. Now, protection-wise, if we're talking about gear, the most important piece of protection that you need when you're going downhill is this <laughs> helmet. And helmets, you can use a few different ones. You can use an open-faced helmet, just like this one which it's not the safest, but at the same time, it protects the most important part, which is your head. Of course, you can always fall on your face, but for that, you can use... This is a full face helmet. And the reason why you use a full face helmet, well, basically there's two. Main reason, it's more safe. As you, as you can see, it's more safe. And other than that, it's also more aerodynamic. And when you when you go downhill, when you go real fast, every little detail count and every little thing will make you go faster. This is supposed to cut the wind better than an open face helmet. Other than that, there's more protections that you need. And the second one, which is really, really important, is the way you protect your hands. You can protect your hands with these. These are like some Inui wrist guards, but you can use any other wrist guards as long as you feel your wrist is protected and you need this plastic protection or metal or whatever or you can also use some downhill specific protection this one is made of leather it has like a sliding puck which i still don't know how to use it but it saves me if i go really really fast this can save me so gloves are the second for some people even more important but in my opinion they are the second most important piece of protection that you can use other than that knee pads help Elbow pads help. Some people even use those shorts with foam or whatever you call it. It's called crash pads. Some people even use protections in their back. I guess it's up to what you feel safe and what you feel that you can move with. Now, skate-wise, what do you want to use when you're going downhill? You might have seen that a lot of people use five-wheel skates when they go downhill. Something like this or... something like this the reason why you use the five wheel skates is longer frame lower to the ground than if you use like a tree 125 and when it's lower to the ground it's also more stable and because you have five wheels 
you have more grip. Is this the only setup that you can use for downhill? No. I keep saying it depends on the downhill that you're doing. If you're doing something with like not that benty, like something more like straight, like straight lines, you can use a 3125. If it's a long frame, it's going to be stable enough. Of course, if it's higher, if it's a taller skate, it's not as stable as a lower frame, but it can also give you more speed if you have bigger wheels. But then, if you need to turn, if you need to do any tight turns, that's when you need these. The five wheels will give you a lot more grip and that grip is going to be needed. So five wheels, more grip, four wheels, more grip than three. You can even use it, you can even do it with two if you want, but good luck on those turns. Excited about these ones. This is Looks like cool. <laughs> question usually is but how do I stop how do I slow down so there's a few different ways to slow down easiest way or the most common way is carving so basically if instead of going in a straight line if you go something like this guy if you do something like that that is going to slow you down then there's also a few other ways to stop and those are other techniques that you can use from other types of skating. Something like a T-stop. Yeah. Can you make a T-stop? You mean? Yeah, a T-stop is something like this. Check this. That will reduce the speed when you're going down. Let's see what Zen got here. Wait, 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 wait. Is it the best? No. Kills your wheels? Yes. But <laughs> it is what it is and sometimes you don't feel comfortable with other types of stop such as... Can you do a slide then? That was actually good huh? It was his first time on the five times 80 millimeters. That's good. Let me just do one. you know what protections to use and how to slow down there's also another way for you to slow down which is called the air brake basically you might have seen when people go down they use a, a aerodynamic technique I can say it it's called the tuck and the tuck can be done in more <laughs> kind of <laughs> There's, there's more than one different tuck. Basically, there's a tuck with both legs and there's a tuck with one foot in front of the other. You might have seen both of them. But if you're going in that position, it's actually a lot faster than if you just skate like normally. So basically, if you're going in that tuck position, when you just open, when you just stand up and open something like that, that will make you stop. Zane is going to show it for us. Come on, Zane, show me the hair break. The hair break. <laughs> In front of me. Boom, hair break. Ah! The thing is, if you're going slow, you don't really feel it. But if you're going real fast, you'll feel a huge difference because the wind is just gonna make you reduce speed. Yeah, that's for sure. Then, now let's go to the tuck. What is the tuck? Tuck is something like an aerodynamic position that you get to go faster so you need to think of your body in a way that is going to cut the wind so the old tuck like a lot of people call it used to be something like this you put both legs parallel and then with your hands you try to cut the wind and you need to think that your your upper body needs to be as parallel to the ground as possible because if I'm gonna go like this my chest is going to to be air breaking you don't want that so it would be something like this some people can go lower and some people say that if you go lower to the ground you have more control I guess 
it depends on everyone and also it depends on your flexibility not everyone has the same flexibility not everyone can do the same with their body and not everyone feel safe the same way with skates so it's up to what you feel comfortable but you should know this is the regular the old tuck something like this again don't forget that these needs to go as parallel as possible to the ground now the new school tuck which comes from skateboarding from longboard whatever it's something like this and why do you do it well if you look at my legs when i do the old tuck i have two points cutting the wind basically both legs are going to be against the wind air stopping me but if i do the new tuck the front leg is covering the back one so instead of having two wind breaks or two yeah two points breaking me with the wind uh, two wind breaks how are you doing morning instead of having two <laughs> instead of having two wind breaks if i do the new tuck i also have one only then of course there's also less wheels rolling on the floor that can make me go faster in my opinion for me it's easier to get parallel to the ground with my upper body but at the same time it's a lot more tiring and a lot less stable so start with the old school tuck and then the more comfortable you get then you can get to the new school tuck if you want to say it okay now what can we do what should we do now Zane what wheels do you think would be the best for downhill soft or hard I reckon it depends on um Harder is going to be a high rolling speed mm -hmm. um, and softer is going to be a low rolling speed. Maybe you'll get a bit more grip. It depends on what you... Yeah, so basically there's something really <clears throat> important. A lot of times people think the hardness of the wheels will give you more grip. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It has to do with the compound of the wheel. So yeah. you need to look at the wheel as a, like a, a whole together of speed grip and sliding capability capability something like that so most of the times the hardest wheels make it harder for you to slide and i know that most of the people think that this doesn't make sense and a lot of people think yeah but if it's harder it's going to be easier to slide not necessarily it has to do more with the compound of the wheel than with the hardness of the wheel the thing is usually with a softer wheel when you slide it's more stable so the wheel is soft yes it's hitting the wheel the wheels last last time but when it slides it's like smooth like buttery smooth yeah. if you get like super hard wheels what happens is that the wheels go like yeah and that doesn't give you control you don't want that so it's hard to explain what i can tell you is these wheels work both of these these are the power slide spinner 85 and these ones are the undercover chameleon 90 millimeters 86a they are completely different compounds but both of them works for sliding if i would be using some other wheels i don't know like i said before it just depends on the compound so now let's do our first hills let's put let's gear up with protections <coughs> Should I do it first or you want to do it first? I think you can do it first. Really important when it comes to speed and aerodynamic is the clothes that you get. Usually, if you have something like super baggy, it's going to be less aerodynamic and make you go slower. So, you might have seen, if, if you look at real downhill videos or competitions, you'll see people using a lot of these. Something like Lycra, whatever that is. This one is not really Lycra, but it's something that... that something that looks like lycra also some people use leather like leather is usually really good for aerodynamic and it will also protect you so if you use any leather suit usually you don't need to use like knee pads or something like that on top of it but i guess it depends on you and today it's like a chilled hill so zane is going to be using jeans and jeans is actually like one of the best options that you can have especially when you're starting we're not expecting to fall when you down when you go downhill you, you don't expect to fall but in case it happens jeans is one of the best protections if you don't have any like leather suit or something like that these that i got it might be the worst option <laughs> so it's faster if i like if i want to go faster if i take the shorts out and if i just go with that it's going to be faster than the the jeans but at the same time for sure not as protective. No. <laughs>
<laughs> so let's do this then. Good luck with that. Nice. Let's do this. Felt amazing. Then, you good? Yeah, I'll be okay. It's Zane's first day downhill, so he's still a little bit scared. You uh -huh. can see it. As someone who's driving the safety car, the most important thing is to make sure that if there's a car coming behind, we tell them why we are here. So they need to understand there's a skater in front of us. For Zane, it's important that he keeps the side this side of the road the one that i'm driving because i can give him protection on my side of the road but if he goes to the other side then i can't do anything obviously if it's a straight hill you can actually look and you can see if there's other cars coming yeah. okay let's do this boom give me five get it handbrake i know <laughs> He's going for it. Get it, Zane? So, the thing here is for me, sometimes it's, it's kind of scary that you go really, really close, but at the speed that he is going, if something goes wrong, it will slide too. It's, if something goes wrong, if for some reason he falls, it's way more efficient for me in the car to stop than for him so basically what happens is I can always stop if I'm paying attention so probably filming or doing what I'm doing right now it's something that you should not be doing we started skating around 7 right now it's about 9 30 and Traffic is picking up, so it's becoming a lot more dangerous, so it's time for us to stop. As you might have seen in this whole video, I keep talking about safety. Because downhill can actually be really, really fun. And it's something that you can do for as long as you want. Don't forget, like helmet, gloves are really, really important. Make sure that you don't do it alone and you have a safety car. It's like also really, really important. Try to avoid picking hours of traffic and then also be smart because once your legs start getting tired, it's time to stop. And it, my legs are fucked, I'm going. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's really, especially when it's a long hill, it's, comp it's a real leg burner. So you might not see it in the videos, but when you go down long hills, your legs stop responding. And if you do it once, two, three times, it's sometimes just 
it's hard because here you want to do it but you really need to stop it otherwise it's not safe anymore so that's what we're gonna do now that's it we're gonna end up this video right here we have the best city in the world right behind this camera right now we had lots of fun and I think that's the most important thing so I hope either it's downhill ramp skating free skating whatever you want to call it the most important thing is that you have fun there's a few things that you should know on each type of skating that will make it safer and probably have more fun so that's it yeah do you want to say anything else oh, i'm just saying like you were saying about uh, uh regardless of what you do i'm generally an aggressive skater and this is my first time in a long time doing some downhill it's a lot of fun all types of skating are enjoyable so whatever you do have fun guys that's it hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video don't forget to give us some thumbs up if you don't like it thumbs down but let let us know why what did we do wrong here we're trying to make you better at something so anyway if you don't like it give me thumbs down but if you did like it subscribe to the channel maybe subscribe to the channel if you don't like it either maybe the next one you're gonna like exactly. other than that <laughs> other than that just never forget why we all started skating because it's fun cheers guys